All right, I see 10 o'clock here on my computer, so let's call this meeting to order. I see that all members are present and accounted for. And welcome back to our monthly meeting. Doesn't look like we have any public people to be heard. So let's review the minutes, questions, additions from last month. Do I hear a motion to accept them? I move. I second. Okay. We're Susan, Susan, could I just say I'm reading the minutes. I was very sorry to have missed this meeting. Um, oh, it was it, quite, it, it, quite fun August. to be here and discussing all of it. Yes. And Prudence, <laughs> I think you captured it all three, you know, everything Good. is covered. Um, I have a question about the minutes. Sure. Um, so, are we following Robert's rules of order? I guess we're supposed to. Okay, because they do have a minute format, um, which would be topic, decision, motion, and discussion as they're presently done the minutes would not occur. So the minutes would be probably a half a page to a page. So I guess my question is, is that the, do we wanna keep the minutes as they are or do we want to go to Robert's rules of order? My opinion is I like the minutes as they are with little summaries of what we discussed. Okay, okay. I would just add that, you, you know, because I, I sit on six boards mm -hmm. or something and the, and the council as well. And what we're doing is kind of a modified, relaxed Robert's Rules of Order. Right. And, and, and so, you know, what works for, uh, as long as it's not too little, I think what works for the board is, is probably okay. Okay. I okay. like what you're doing, Prudence, question. I really do. Thanks. Let's see, Michelle has joined us just in time for item 5A. Congratulations on being open, Michelle. We are loving it. We are loving it. Okay, so Robin has the... Um, foot care scope of services, both that health and wellness and the foot care scope of services have gone to purchasing to get released. So we have a list of preferred vendors. And of course, it'll follow the city's uh, policies on purchasing for release on the various sites that the city does that. Robin, do you want to pull up the foot care scope of services? could be doing her other job. <laughs> Robin, there she goes. Multitasking master. Um, so essentially, um, I think, Robin, you want to go up to the first page? Looks like that's the last page. Right. So um, I think I mentioned to you all last month, last meeting that we'd had foot care for many years, originally part of Longmont United Hospital home care agency, and then that home care agency separated, and then that home care agency closed. So between that and COVID, we have not offered foot care. So um, the reason why we would do foot care is because it is so critical to the health and well-being, especially of older adults who may be having things like um, hammer toes, um, diabetes related health issues, neuropathy, et cetera. So, um, gave a little bit of a reason why we would single out foot care as an issue. And then I have the scope of work. So 
It would be provided here on site at least two days a month. That's what we were doing prior, um, that we would not charge them for the room um, and that um, they would work with us around um, providing some educational programs on foot care at, um, at no charge. So um, the proposal goes on for the formal requirements. And then Robin, if you'd go to page two, I just want to review some of the evaluation criteria and see if you all want to add anything else to this. So um, we're looking for a licensed professional foot care. Um, and so we wanna make sure that this is a specialty of the agency, that they have the license and the experience to do that, that it's affordable. Um, and that's, those are the really the key. I, I have put ability to provide bilingual bicultural services. Um, and so those, those seem to me to be the key, three key things, affordability, that they have licensure, professional, um, probably should add insurance in there, but I think it's elsewhere in the, the document and bilingual. So in, in terms of anything else, you would want to evaluate a vendor on um, for a foot care program. Is there anything missing there? But uh, we want to say anything about possibility of them accepting, I don't know, Medicare or other insurances? Is that a, I mean, would that be something that we could consider also or not? Yeah, so other payment options, Art, I think that's a good one. Yes, we could add that in if they can demonstrate how they accept other forms of payment. Okay. Michelle, is there a way that we, um, can, I guess, maybe review, um, re, uh, well, reviews of the company that's applying? So it, it would like be- their, their performance and, and customer, customer satisfaction. Okay. We can ask for that in the process that they would bring some demonstrated customer feedback or something like that. Yeah, I just feel like that would be something that's really important. Okay. I, I, think, I just think having somebody, you know, that <clears throat> has good reviews is more likely to stick around in the program and give good service. All right. So those, um, if you think of something else, pl please tell me um, that these are both the foot care and the overall health and wellness are in our purchasing department right now for review. I will add this information and then hopefully by June, we'll have a time schedule uh, for when uh, proposals are returned and um, a schedule to interview and review the, the proposals. Any other questions, comments about this? If not, um, Robin, I think you can pull it down. Great. Thank you, Robin. And then we're moving on to the discussion and follow up for the proclamation for the annual report to council on 427, which thank you, Art and Michelle did. Art, you're muted. Oh, I, I just have to say that uh, I felt comfortable with it. Uh, thanks to the help of Michelle on my little presentation. Uh, did an outstanding job. Uh, and it was very good. Uh, I thought it was a very good report. In fact, it was only, if I recall, a couple of questions. So it was pretty well covered as far as I was concerned. Yeah, I, I thought it went very well, and you both did a, did a very good job. Thank you. 
Good suggestion, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and thanks to Art. You know that whole virtual thing is uh, presenting virtually is an interesting uh, experience. So, yeah. Looks like you've had a little bit of experience at that. Uh, uh. <laughs> well, Erica did the PowerPoint. That was huge. That is not uh, my forte, and that that helped a ton. So, that was thank you, Robin. <laughs> yes. Maybe your next job, Michelle, should be in video business. Oh, no, 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 no. He's staying far away from that one. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we we I was interviewed twice this this past week about the reopening. That's enough uh, publicity contact for me for a year. I. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on to June second, where we have a maybe option to meet in person or virtually if Kari can do so. So I have not checked in with Carrie, um, we can certainly do virtual. Um, and um, Robin and Carrie uh, could get together to make sure we, we're um, organized to, to manage her PowerPoint, her presentation. So it's just a question. Um, we do have yoga going on in the gym. Um, on Wednesday, so it will be, I would have to really hunt for a room that could hold you all uh, and meet the space calculator, unless of course that change changes next week. Or do you wanna just go ahead and go forward if and plan for that June meeting to be virtual? And you understand that it'll be mostly Carrie Middleton presenting on um, reframing aging, just confirming all those things. So virtual? Hit, show of hands, maybe? Reluctantly. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll do it virtual. Um, and then Robin, I'll connect Robin with Carrie Middleton. And we'll do just the basic business, open the meeting and, and go from there. But it will be mostly the presentation on reframing aging. So. Michelle? Yeah, Art. Right. You know, I, I'm okay with the virtual for next month, uh, but I also, I would like to see us get started again in, in person as soon as possible. So maybe we look at Well, the July, yeah, maybe in July. Uh, Can you get us be. a room? Yeah, get us a room in July, please, please, <laughs> please. Yeah. <laughs> Janine? Janine, you're muted. Sorry. It'll also give us an opportunity to have experienced the senior center being open for two months and uh, will allow us to have a little more time in terms of seeing where our current pandemic is moving in what direction. So uh, I was gonna suggest that we plan on July, um, but I think July will be better than June. Okay, sounds good. Sheila, did you have something you wanted to say? Okay. Then each well plan update. So um, we saw a draft plan from the Air Agency on Aging that really, um, I'm gonna just kind of go backwards to go forward. We did our first age well plan countywide in 2006. We did an update in 2010 and an update in 2014. We were on track to do an update in 2018 and the Air Agency on Aging did a, a shift and really focused on some data. And several of you have that book, Past, Present and Future. It was a data compilation um, in 2018. And then in 2019, we were doing focus groups and we held a summit, really trying to dig a little deeper into that data. And then COVID hit. So the, we never had a 2018 plan. 
and the next four-year plan would be in 2022. So the Area Agency on Aging has suggested kind of an interim plan that really focuses on um, continued emphasis in responding relative to the pandemic. So it's about technology, it's about connection. So we reviewed that um, last week. So I will be sending that out to you all um, after this first revision that we should be getting here, I would expect in the next week or two. And that I would hope in July, we could really spend considerable time focusing on that plan, that interim plan, as well as give input on the 2022 process. So if that will work for you all, and for those of you, Julie, uh, maybe Prudence, if you have questions about this age well planning process, now's the time. Ask me, ask me about it. Um, if you don't have that past, present, and future book, I can get that to you. Um, so let's let's just talk about that. Sheila? I don't have a copy of that book, so I would like to have a copy. Okay. Yeah, same. same. Help. Okay, Julie, I can do that. Actually, I don't think I have one. Okay. So maybe I do, and I just have lost track of it, but I'd be much, I read it with a much more critical eye than when I received it the first time, if I received it the first time. Okay. Looks like most of us might need that, Michelle. I don't know that. Okay. I have to look, at, look for it, and I don't It's been a while since okay. I've looked at All right. it. I did not receive it. <laughs> All right. so, Everyone gets a copy. Okay. So will you send that via email? Um, if I can get an electronic version from the AAA, I will send it electronically. Okay. And if not, it'll be mailed. Oof. But I'll yeah. try. I'm going for electronic. <laughs> Michelle, do you have some in the office? Yes, I do. I, I'm volunteering there tomorrow morning so I can pick it up. And I will get that to you tomorrow. You okay. know, honestly, it, it, is there an urgent deadline? Because we could just all pick it up in July. Yeah. Rather than mailing them. Okay. Yeah. We can do that too. Could I pick one up from your office? I, I'll put them at the front desk. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, even better. Yeah, I want to swing by and see too. Yeah, yeah, I will put it at the front desk. So that document is really data. Um, and the Area Agency on Aging hired a planner, Lindsay Parsons, and she really put that piece together. Um, so, so we are in some ways a little ahead and in some ways years behind and in some ways we have a whole new set of data from the pandemic so i think the 2022 process will be different and i hope um i hope that you all have some good ideas about that you know what the engagement and i can prepare some information and talk to you a little about how we've engaged people in the past um, and the surveys we've done, but uh, this plan not only um, sets the priorities for the Area Agency on Aging and the federal dollars that come through that agency, but also the state dollars that are coming through that agency. And right now they are getting one to $2 million in CARES Act funding uh, as a result of the pandemic. And so, they use that plan to guide their funding. And Longmont Senior Services has used that plan to guide some of our initiatives. And so I think it's, it's important. It's a very important planning tool and we have used it in conjunction with the Longmont Comprehensive Plan Envision Longmont. We added an appendix to the Envision Longmont Comp Plan that was Envision Longmont Aging Well. Um, and so we 
uh, and Marcia can certainly speak to this, but the city of Longmont doesn't need you know, 20 different planning guiding documents. And so weaving it into the comp plan was a really huge success um, and important uh, milestone, I think. So um, you all get to carry that torch going forward. So 2022 will be a big year. You know, Michelle, I have my issues with Envision Longmont, but I think the aging well is, is one of the best sections it's more, more aspirational and um, yeah, so good job anyway. Yeah, it, it was important to have a guiding document and, and to be in there. So that plan is starting to materialize, but I will tell you, no 2018 plan, just this interim plan, and I will get that to you. It looks like Robin has a hand up. Robin, did you need to say something? No, I don't have a hand up. I don't see what that is. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay. Never mind. So moving on to other old business. No old business. So new business council retreat topic regarding area agency on aging so um marcia do you want to talk about this at all you probably know a little bit more than i do about where this came from yeah i do i know all there is to know about it um uh, the the council retreat was supposed to be focused on uh on on the LHA reorganization and uh, what, what the council needed to know to function as the um, LHA board of directors, which it now does. And uh, Joan actually added this to the agenda and I am not sure why other than because the, the bulk of the LHA properties now are for older adults. Um, so uh, I assume that she and Sandy have had more conversations about what she wants out of that. Um, and I, I confess that I had suggested to Sandy that we, uh, you know, they're, they're giving us, because they're trying to keep it one day long, they're, they're giving us study guides in advance. And I had suggested that this be a study guide in advance so we could focus more on housing, which is the real deep need. Um, but uh, you'd have to ask Joan, you know, what, what she feels that it's, that it's on the agenda for we have discussed and we have a long list of ways, and Michelle, I'm sure you know this much better than I do, that uh, in which um, the current LHA properties fall short of meeting the needs of our aging population, um, mostly accessibility stuff. And, and so I, I, I can surmise that that was Joan's intention. That's helpful, Marcia, thank you. So where the um, Area Agency on Aging and this advisory board intersect um, is in a couple ways. First, Janine is um, your designated liaison to the Boulder County Area Agency on Aging Advisory Council. Um, every piece of the United States has an area agency on aging. And for us, Boulder County was government was designated our uh, area agency on aging for Boulder County. They get the federal funds from the Older Americans Act. They are required to form an advisory council. So Janine sits as your liaison, plus there are some at large seats. Uh, and there's some other folks from Longmont who are a part of that council. Um, 
I am putting together a graphic for the retreat that sort of talks about um, the Denver Regional Council of Governments and the Boulder County Area Agency on Aging. And the reason being is for many, from 1973 through 1990, the Denver Regional of Council of Governments was our area agency on aging for Boulder County. And in 1990, Boulder County got designated. So I think my understanding is there was some interest in looking at what Dr. Cog does as the area um, agency on aging for the metro area and what Boulder County does for us. And so Janine, I'm working with Christine, who's the director of the Area Agency on Aging to put together some information for the retreat. And um, my understanding is the retreat's now in July. Yes, that was my next thing is this he keeps getting put off and put off. So uh, you, there's not a real hurry here. So I will plan to bring that information back to either the July or the August meeting, um, just so the board is on the same page as the council in terms of the, the services, the dollars, and the relationships. But um, I think it's a great time to just take a look at the Area Agency on Aging and what they do for us and what they do with us. So I just wanted you all to be aware that's on the horizon um, and it's a good, it's a good follow-up. And it's a good question to ask relative to the housing authority. Um, here's a really good example. Um, we are looking at doing some things technologically and um, safety-wise in the properties, um, the senior properties specifically. And I turned to the Area Agency on Aging and I said, can I get money for this? <laughs> so put on my Longmont Housing Authority hat. And the answer was, yeah, I think you can. So um, Joan is right in sort of pointing out that they might be a resource uh, for helping us keep um, folks housed safely and, um, and well. So more to come probably on that. So thanks. Any questions? All right. Not about that, but I was just curious now that the senior center is reopened as of this week, are you getting people dropping in for information or is it most people making appointments? So um, Robin, would you like to take a stab at answering that? If you're not multitasking. <laughs> Sorry, I did not hear the question. Yeah, so just a question about people coming in the building. Are they dropping in, making appointments? How are classes going? Can you just give a little sense of what the last couple of days have been like? Um, people don't need to make an appointment to come in. So yeah, they can just walk in. And Are you getting drop-ins? Yes. Good. Um, and then they're coming in for classes mainly, so... We've had, I think we had 21 for yoga today. Is that right? Or 21 for fitness this morning, maybe? 21 for fitness. And I think we have about 22, 23 for yoga in a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Pent up demand. What? I'm sorry. I said it's pent up demand. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I guess the Memorial Building had these classes earlier in the year. And they were like, oh, they never fill up. But when they're over here at the senior center, they're starting to fill up. So that's cool to see. The knitters, um, the knitters are here today. They are outside. It's a little brisk, um, but I think there's probably 10 or 12 people out there picking up yarn and talking and connecting. We've had some pool players. Um, we've been able to resume the lunch bunch, which is the early stage dementia um, social group. So that met Monday and it's meeting again today. Um, tax aid is continuing. Um, I, I, it, there's an energy in the building. It's just, it's lovely. It's and cars in the parking lot. It just makes um, all of us very happy. That's really encouraging. Yeah. 
I was a greeter yesterday and I was really impressed with how happy people are to be back together. I mean, that was a big issue with people coming in for their yoga class and people just coming in in general. I could hear and see in their face the joy of just having that opportunity to interact. So it's been sadly missed and people are very happy that they can now come again. Thank you for doing that, Janine. We have another volunteer out there today that Robin worked with. And I think Julie and Art are uh, rounding out Thursday and Friday. So um, we appreciate that extra. We weren't sure what it was going to be like. And um, it's great to have someone out there with smiling eyes. You know, my, uh, my Irish father would appreciate the uh, smiling eyes behind the mask and, um, and, uh, it's been fun. I, uh, we do have our memorial altar up and we have had some uh, comments from people and um, Mr. Uh, Uvaldo Valdez said to me that he really um, appreciated, he thought it was really lovely. Robin, I don't know if you've had other comments about the altar, but Robin and Brandy and Veronica did a beautiful job putting the altar together. Um, we had a very meaningful and private opportunity as a team to sort of launch or in my, my lingo, bless <laughs> the altar uh, before we reopened. And we are inviting people to add to it um, names and or items uh, that are meaningful if they would like to do that. Um, so I don't know, Robin, if you wanna say anything about comments you've had or not had, but um, I think Julie and Art, uh, Janine, you would have seen it yesterday. Erica did a beautiful poster in English and in Spanish, inviting people to the memorial altar. And um, it was important for us as a team. And I think it's important uh, for our community to understand the impact that this pandemic has had on our older community members. So. Yeah, sorry, Michelle, I don't have other comments, just people, a lot of people stopping to look at it, so. Thanks, Robin. <laughs> you gonna go dark on us again? Probably, Maybe. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Anything else that we have to discuss under new business? Prudence. Um, if, if my memory serves me correctly, um, Michelle, uh, are you planning to retire this year? Uh, May of 2022 is sort of my target date, Prudence. Okay. And so that's a bit away, but um, I have a question. Um, how is the, um, when will the position be posted? What is the process for hiring? And um, will there be an interim? And I had one more question. Will the Senior Advisory Council get to interview the candidates? You know, these are great questions. And, <laughs> um, and uh, in uh, January, prior to the pandemic, uh, the city manager had planned to meet with um, some of us who were planning to retire and talk about those very things and other things. And the pandemic sort of swept us aside. And so um, I will reach out to Harold. I think these are great questions and he is really the person who um, will be driving that bus. So um, yeah, I will pass those along Prudence and, um, and maybe he can pop in at a meeting later this year and visit with you all about that. I think, um, he has been super thoughtful and engaged when other people have left. And I think he will do the same. So, right. uh, yeah. And I think, one, I think to uh, something Marcia mentioned, um, the fact that so many of the LHA properties are senior properties. Um, I think there's, th that's another question. Uh, I think going forward is the relationship between the division of senior services and, and that um, 
component of the Longmont Housing Authority. We are really working, a lot of us, very closely in those properties and um, on behalf of that work. And I don't see that ending, though it may be changing a little. And so I think those that's another element of me leaving is what's that going to be like? I think, yeah. And for sure, we need to know. <laughs> and you can let Harold know those things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You know, I don't know whether I'm talking out of school here, but um, one of the ideas about, uh, you know, there are three major projects essentially set to launch in terms of new LHA um, developments. And one or two of them, depending on how you count, is at least under discussion as being part assisted living and part family um, housing, uh, which, uh, gee, Michelle, that seems like designing a community like that ought to be right up your alley. And you could be enticed to uh, <laughs> to stay involved just a little longer, um, but um, but that is going to be uh, aside from trying to hang on to Michelle. Uh, I think that's going to be a very exciting advisory opportunity um, for all of us because uh, you know that's so so much of a potential win-win situation that I'm excited about it. Affordable assisted living is a huge gap in our community. And I'm very excited that um, Harold's interested and others are interested in pursuing that. It's very exciting. Um, so 40, 40 years is a long time to be here. It's probably time for some fresh ideas and fresh energy. And um, I, I'm confident the team and you all will carry that forward. I do have a new business item, Susan. So um, okay. I didn't get on the agenda if it's the time is now. The time is now. We have had an informal um, arrangement with Boulder County Area Agency on Aging um, where they have funds they call short-term assistance. And our resource specialist, Amy, uh, Veronica and Melissa uh, can utilize those funds for things like rent, eyeglasses, dental care, very similar to what we use the Friends Last Resort money for. Um, they have decided to do a more formal process. Um, and so I will be completing a solicitation for qualifications uh, through Boulder County government um, and asking for um, a pot of funds, and I'm asking for $35,000. Um, we will probably, historically, we have run those requests through the Friends of the Senior Center. Going forward, I'm going to ask probably, it's not 100%, but I'm pretty sure, uh, for those funds to go to the city of Longmont. And then Veronica and Amy and Melissa will access them uh, through the city process. So um, it also, we asked for more money because of the relationship with Longmont Housing Authority. Um, I think we, we as senior services staff have been in those senior properties more and I think we have a greater understanding of the need there and the outreach we've been doing. So um, we're, we'll be asking for funds through that process and those funds are going to go, I think, through the city of Longmont rather than the friends. So um, we'll see how that goes, um, but it will mean more money, which is great. Um, and a little bit different tracking mechanism uh, uh, through the city process. So I'm very excited to um, formalize that and get that solidified. Um, informal agreements are great when you've worked with people for years and years, but when you're getting ready to leave, it's probably time to tie it up. <laughs> so Michelle, will that be something we have to put in motion every year or is it once and done? 
Yeah, the, the county typically does a three to five year agreement and then it's reviewed. So um, that's our hope. Um, yeah, that it will be multi-year before it's reviewed. So, but anyways, it's great. And it's another way we're connecting with our Air Agency on Aging and getting those funds into Longmont and getting the right people, which is our resource staff, um, making those connections. So, so theoretically, friends funds could possibly fund, say, like a part-time staff member or something like that if we're freeing up this 35000 Well, you know, Susan, that's a great question. And um, my staff would tell you that the Area Agency on Aging money is for people 60 and above. And having the friends funds be for 55 and above has okay. really been helpful. Okay. Um, just in this last year, we've had several people, 55, 57, who lost their jobs due to COVID, had um, financial needs that the friends have been able to help, where the area agency on aging would not have been able to help. Prudence, I think you had your hand up. Yeah. I'm. Um I, I wanted kind of to uh, know if what's the how did you come up with thirty five thousand dollars and um, is there an opportunity because it sounds like they're going to get a lot of money whether that amount um, is too conservative? Yeah, so I met with the staff uh, yesterday. Um, and we were all over the map from 20,000 to 50,000. <laughs> what should we ask for? Um, and really the important thing is you have to spend it. I mean, if you commit to it, you really got to be sure. So we looked back over the last several years, what we've spent. Um, and then we factored in uh, the newer uh, developing relationship with the housing authority properties. And they felt pretty good about 35. Um, that, that's sort of where we landed. There are additional funds uh, that we will also apply for through this process that go directly to supporting caregivers. So it doesn't have the age limitation, um, but we can help pay for respite care, personal care, um, and other things for someone who is actively engaged in caring for someone over 60. Um, so we haven't landed yet on that dollar amount because that's kind of a new way for us to look at doing things, but that's an additional uh, opportunity. Thanks. Good. Good question. So that's on the horizon and I will keep you updated how that, how that goes. Michelle, how much time do they, I mean, do they expect this money to be used up within a, the three or five years that you're talking about or, or sooner? So the county, uh, the county's fiscal calendar is June 30th to July 1st or July 1st to June 30th, whichever. Um, and so that $35,000 art has to be spent in that 12 month period from July 1st of 2021 to June 30th of 2022 or, or thereabouts. It's, I don't know, the county calendar is close to that. Um, so yeah, that has to be spent in a 12 month period. And, and again, you, you have to apply for this. And at this point, we don't know if we're going to receive that yet. So we, that's correct. We have to submit our qualifications, um, and then they will decide if we are worthy. <laughs> and you don't know when that will happen. You don't know when the deadline is for that. Yeah. The deadline for the proposal is May 14th, that Friday, and then um, I'm sure we will know there soon after because the, the fiscal year will start um, okay. here at the end of June. So, um, Thank and, you. And similar to the city, they have to do an open competitive process, which is just the right thing to do. Yeah. Janine? Um, one of the suggestions at the last AAC uh, meeting was if we had any ideas about how to spend the funds that they've been allocated, we should share it and 
we have another meeting on Friday. So I will be uh, happy to share my uh, support of them giving money to Longmont. <laughs> so, yes. Hey, uh, and, a and a shout out um, under my report, um, the Area Agency on Aging has just committed to 50 Chromebooks. So we will be giving away another set of Chromebooks. And we are, um, I met with Valerie from Nextlight this more, uh, Tuesday morning about um, some partnerships around access for the LHA senior properties to Nextlight, what, what we could do if we could find some funds to help with um, the internet access. So they, they are definitely working on behalf of Longmont, uh, Janine, and it's been great to partner with them. So is Next Light in the LHA buildings? Um, Next Light is in the suites. It is in uh, the Hearthstone and the Lodge. And it's getting ready in June to go into Aspen Meadows a, a Senior Apartments and Aspen Meadows neighborhood. Um, I am not sure about Fall River, Spring Creek, and Village Place. It may already be there, Susan. I, I don't know that. Okay. Um, but I know it's going into Aspen Meadows in June. So they're moving along with access, even without people saying, I want this, I want this. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think our city leadership has been all over this um, and doing really great work. Great. Anything else on new business questions? Well, if you've seen the summer go, you know that Larry is leaving. Um, he's resigned effective June um, 18th. So uh, we have submitted the paperwork um, to refill his position. And if that is all approved, I will be coming back to you all to see who would like to be a part of the hiring for that position. So um, I may or may not have said this, but Larry and his wife just welcomed their third child, a little baby girl on April 13th, um, Ember Storm. I'm like, you have just given that young girl some big, <laughs> big names, Ember and Storm. So, um, so he and his family are moving back to the Northeast. So we're very sad to lose Larry, but also very happy for him. So that position will be, um, will be coming, uh, hopefully we'll be filling that position. Um, through the month of May, we are sticking to 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then we anticipate if Boulder County Public Health does release the new orders we've heard about that are coming in the middle of May. We will look at um, June, July, and August um, and any changes. The staff is meeting. We met twice this week already to just sort of do a reopening check-in and adjust accordingly um, and made some minor adjustments uh, just to make sure we're we're welcoming, we're uh, responding to what we're hearing, we're managing our resources, et cetera, and we'll continue to do that. Um, and at the same time, our staff are now planning September, October, November, which we certainly hope we are more open uh, by then. Um, Megan's looking at some trips. Um, possible day trips and our softball uh, season kicked off. So we have softball players. We have four teams that are out <clears throat> competing. Um, so uh, we're just trying to stay as connected as we can and, and adjust um, and asking forgiveness as we adjust. Yes, we said this yesterday, tomorrow we're saying this. And that's kind of how we have been adjusting to this pandemic all along. And we're trying to be fair um, and keep people informed, but also being responsive. So I told, I told my boss, Karen Roney, th this whole reopening is like sitting on a very pointed fence, you know? 
it's painful left and it's painful to the right, but we're, we're, uh, we're using, we're using the best of our team to figure this out. So if you hear things are Julie, um, as you greet people, you know, we want to be informed. We want to hear from people and we, we want to be responsive. So because of the shutdown and people aging during this shutdown, because that doesn't stop, I haven't heard at the greeter door, but I have heard through the grapevine that we may be needing to recruit a couple of more trip escorts. Yeah, we've been talking to our marketing person, Susan, about volunteer re-engagement. Um, because you're right, aging has continued and we have folks who a year and a half ago may have been more able or more interested or more willing than they are today. So it has definitely been a topic among our team. Um, it's not just about reopening. It's not just about re-engaging as a team, but it's also re-engaging with our volunteers, our teachers, our instructors, our our softball managers, um, our hike leaders, all of those folks. So definitely we're talking about it and, um, and, and Erica is aware. So okay. uh, yeah, great point though. I think that's it for my report. Okay. And Marsha, you're up. Yes, um, I, I think the, you know, the big news, which we've already talked about, is that there will be a city council retreat that is, is focused on uh, uh, public housing and our plans for public housing. So once again, I'm like to say I'm really, really interested if anybody wants to write me a, a note or arrange a call. Um, uh, sorry, um, then, uh, that would be, that, that'd be great. You know, all of the feedback that I can take into that, uh, will be wonderful. I expect it to be mostly a learning experience for the council since we have a new job, but it, it never hurts to have, you know, to hear as many voices as possible. And it is an open meeting. So if anybody wants to come along uh, and listen, that's allowed, or at least it used to be allowed. So will you be meeting in person as a council or is it all Zoom meeting? No, we, are, we, we specifically decided that this time we're gonna meet in person and uh, we're all vaccinated now and uh, Everybody essential from the city staff is also vaccinated, even if they're not old. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be an in-person meeting. It may be outdoors um, or, or depending on, you know, where the county stuff uh, hits, uh, then it may not be. Um, and I need to kind of return the call I just shut off. And since we are at the end of the meeting, unless nobody has, if nobody has anything to say to me, I'm going to drop off. Uh, I do, Marcia. Uh, okay. As far as these retreat, are you talking about locations, the need for it? What, what exactly are you talking about? Mm -hmm. discussing Actually, bit? it's more about the rules and financing and, um, timelines and priorities, I think. Um, but, you know, there, uh, a housing authority is, is this whole universe of its own. Uh, and the Venn diagram, uh, Michelle's there going, yeah, it is. The Venn diagram includes um, uh, uh, HUD and uh, DOLA and, oh, it's complicated. So it, I, as I said, it's mostly gonna be learning for us. Yeah. Or Marcia, I, <laughs> I, I just need to share with you because when I make my report to um, 
the council, I'm going to bring it up. At the uh, Longmont uh, Economic Development Partnership, there were some statements made by two city council people uh, that people that did not support um, development were uneducated or uninformed. And I need to tell you that one, I disagree with that. I don't think that, you know, that's necessarily the case. And I said nothing at the time because I was there as a senior advisory board member and I wasn't willing to do a, a personal response uh, as I was representing the board, but I just needed to make that statement. And I know the importance of housing. I know the importance of development, uh, but there are also other considerations that have become paramount and um, just needed to make that statement. Well, I will say I, I, the two council members were almost certainly me and Tim Waters. So, you know, there's no need to be uh, diplomatic about that. Um, we need to be very careful how we manage the remaining growth in Longmont. And I do understand that there was a period in the 80s and 90s when that uh, it was not managed with some fairly unpleasant results. But I am adamant that um, a vote for zero growth in the, in the sense that, um, that the city of Boulder has uh, now, which they will, they will not enforce, it's impossible, but um, is a vote for homelessness. Um, you know, I spend my, uh, I spend my, a lot of my time engaged with the, precariat of Longmont and, and their needs are staggering. And I don't like to think about a community where our teachers don't live here, our weight people don't live here, um, and our fire fighters don't live here. And it, you know, it goes on and on. You, need to, you, you either need to have paid for your house a long time ago or make a six figure income to enter Longmont now or to stay in Longmont if you're growing up out of a family and want your own place now. And I, I stand by it that we, we do not need to be that kind of a community. And I don't remember using the word uneducated, but certainly there are forces in play that are not well understood. Growth concern also is not necessarily supporting zero growth. Because supporting what? I'm sorry, Janine, I didn't hear. I said being concerned about growth does not necessarily mean you support zero growth. So yeah. there's, there's much in between. Okay. I, I think we shouldn't build any more big houses at all. Okay, I really do have to go. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Marcia. Janine, anything else from the area agency on aging? <laughs> well, <laughs> it was it it was a pretty intense meeting. Uh, I think that there's been a lot of um, restructuring. Um, Oh, you said area on agency. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still I did. along my development. Uh, yes, uh, it, it was um, a very long and impactful meeting this past month. We uh, met in groups and then came together at the end. The focus really is on housing. <laughs> it was JAMS, J-A-M-S. The first was housing jam. Uh, we discussed issues with affordability uh, and those issues include the uh, problems that seniors are having with downsizing when they downsize and purchase smaller 
homes, they lose their homestead exemption tax-wise. At the same time, the rise in the cost of housing in Boulder County is such at this point that many older adults are having problems paying their increased taxes. And we're looking at that as an issue, as a problem, looking at how that can be helped, uh, looking at, you know, people have brought up things like uh, tiny homes, but tiny homes, uh, there would have to be changes in terms of uh, code and zoning changes in order to look at um, any kind of um, tiny home development. We discussed, you know, the ins and outs of reverse mortgage. If that is going to be uh, possible, you know, educationally to educate elders about the ins and outs of reverse mortgaging. And especially as we're trying to support people remaining in their homes, how can they financially afford that in our county, which has really gotten out of control in terms of price and cost, not just for older adults, for all of us, uh, but especially for people on limited incomes. Uh, we discuss mental health issues like Janine, Michelle has a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Janine, for years, the county, Boulder County has had a reverse mortgage person, a staff person who mm -hmm. counts. Um, are you, are, is the AAC talking about doing that differently, doing more outreach around that? How, how are they talking about working with that individual? I think it's more about outreach, having it accessible for people to get that information. You know, it's like many services. We often have a lot of services, but if people don't know about them uh, and don't see it as a viable option, then uh, they're looking at, you know, making it more accessible, the information more accessible so people can make good choices in that area. Any other questions about that? Okay. Um, so clutter and hoarding appears to be far more of a problem than I had ever believed that it was. Uh, and that was addressed in terms of assessment of that and support uh, people having a place to report concerns and uh, ways to go about helping. Um, it is a mental health issue as well as uh, a safety issue. Uh, and um, unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't get reported as quickly and as efficiency, efficiently as it needs to be. Um, they, again, uh, want to um, support uh, the maintenance of homes that help in that area is available to senior citizens and uh, let them know that, you know, they can get help, they can get funds if they need to do that. Uh, we also had a long discussion about transportation needs in the community uh, and the fact that we have a lot of public transportation and need to work on how to make that more accessible, uh, especially what they call the first and last mile um, in that we sometimes have services, but we don't necessarily have a way to get people to the bus stop or home from the bus stop and how we can um, better support the services that we have now like VIA and Cultivate in terms of having people have transportation available. There was a long discussion about the giving up of keys, which is when do seniors decide not to drive anymore? And in order to do that successfully, we have to have alternatives for them to be able to have transportation uh, when they need it. 
Um, they discussed other alternatives like serving people with disabilities, how uh, many of our bus services still don't have wheelchair ramps or wheelchair places available, uh, alternatives in terms of ride sharing, and also education about how to navigate the transportation system. Uh, because uh, a lot of uh, older adults don't really know how to navigate alternative transportation methods. Uh, the uh, third jam was economic uh, stability, food security. Uh, we discussed um, aging 101 as far as more integration of programs and connection, more classes in terms of retirement, having classes before rather than at, at retirement. Um, and we also under Aging 101 discussed uh, how COVID-19 has worsened the age discrimination uh, issue. Uh, we did uh, ongoing discussion of uh, fraud, scams and theft. It's a major problem it's become an increased problem since COVID-19. And we discussed what services are available, what outreach programs, tools. Um, and uh, AAC has several programs that uh, respond to fraud and can assist people with navigating the whole concept of fraud. Again, the education is getting people to know where to go and know where to access. Um, I also wanted to add that I attended a Boulder County uh, orientation for board members, and I found that incredibly helpful. Um, I had not done that as a board member, and I, you know, anyone that uh, is on a county board or even Michelle, I was wondering if we might pursue whether anyone who wanted to attend that um, might be able to attend it. It was an online orientation. It took about two hours. Uh, they discussed all kinds of things, including racial equity, dealing with the press, Robert's rules of laws, you know, conduct, what you do, what you don't do, what you're responsible for, what you aren't responsible for. And I just thought, wow, I found it very helpful. And I thought I was really kind of naive when I came onto a board about you know, what my responsibilities were, even attendance responsibilities. So I would highly recommend it. Who put that together, Janine? Well, it, it was uh, Boulder County. Uh, and I assume that I was asked to do that because of my position on the Boulder County area on aging. Um, and, uh, it, it was put on by Boulder County and it, it was just, it was really worthwhile. Excellent, excellent. Well, I'll follow up with Lindsay um, and ask yeah. her about it. Thanks. And I, I attended something that was purported to be that um, last year, but it was much longer. It was over several weeks, um, <laughs> not an hour a week. And I'm afraid I ended up not attending all of the meetings because it was not worthwhile. Um, and um, it didn't give me what I wanted. It didn't give, give me what I, they were supposed to give me. Um, well, and and I know somebody they... else who attended was, had the same mm. reaction as well. So I'd be very interested in this. Yeah. I think two hours was plenty, number one, and uh, maybe because it was online or maybe they've revamped it. I don't think I would have gone every week for six weeks, but no. this, <laughs> this was really good. Well, it was only online for an hour every six oh. weeks. Oh. Um, so, yeah. 
it was it wasn't the time it was the content that was right oh true. okay so. Okay. Now we're up to the friends where Sheila stood in for me last meeting. In addition to the review of their financial reports and they, everybody was very happy that they were in good shape. Um, there was a discussion about using Dropbox to store uh, meeting notes, financial statements, and so on. And I don't think that would affect us. And I don't know whether anybody on the advi our advisory board would need to have access, but um, that was discussed in quite a lot of detail as to what should, be, what should be stored, how it should be stored, who should have access even among the friends board or anybody outside the, the friends board. So I don't think that's something that we need as the documents that we, we produce are minimal, I suppose. So, um, there was also discussion about <coughs> the um, reimbursement from the area, age, the, I'll call it the AAA, I can never remember the three A's, that uh, Michelle was discussing a little earlier. And uh, the result was because not only was there the possibility of more money going to the friends, but there was more um, administrative work involved that people were not pre really prepared to, to do for the possibility of more money. So they decided to continue receiving money in the more informal way. Um, also their, their website is going to be revamped because it's, it's old and there's some misinformation in it. So that's gonna happen by Bruce Armstrong, I think is taking that, the lead on that. And that's, they were the main points of the, the last meeting. Thank you. And then just an FYI, this sticks out at me. Julie's last name is H-A-U-S-E-R on the TRG listing. I think it just got transferred from one month to the next on that template that you have. I love Susan that you always catch it. And it just passes right by me every time because I think I've probably seen my, my name misspelled so many times over the years. <laughs> so did you meet or not? Well, I can't remember the... Uh... Yeah, no. So um, Michelle actually sent me um, the meetings from the March 11th uh, meeting and they have decided to um, dissolve the TRG. Oh. And uh, it, it sounds like it's, they've increased their, and Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, or if you have more to add, but um, they've increased the, um, the amount of staff that they have there. Uh, um, and the, the rules around um, making the decisions and the funding have become more complex. And, um, it sounds like it, sort of what's happening is that the, what's the T, what the TRG is doing is sort of re repeating what the other, what the staff members are having to do. So it's a little bit redundant. And so they feel like they just need to phase out the TRG and bring it all back in to the housing authority. So, yeah. Anything to add, Michelle? In, Really, kind of in a nutshell, all everything that that they that that the report says. Yeah, you know, the only the only way, the kind of the way I think about it, I guess, is the Housing and Human Services Advisory Board is advisory to council, and the TRG was advisory to the Human Housing and Human Services <laughs> Advisory Board. So, think that it was a two layers of advice, and um, yeah, that's too much. 
And that got, I think, unwieldy as the rules and the mechanics got more complicated. So, yeah. So hopefully there'll be different ways for the boards and commissions to participate, but it won't be through this process. So was the last meeting the last meeting? Think so. <laughs> yeah. So Julie is now a free agent to, for a liaison position. <laughs> I guess we're up to you, Art, on the Boulder County Latino Coalition. Uh, I wish Marcia was still here, but uh, maybe uh, Michelle might know a little bit about this uh, Boulder Valley rapid transit that they're looking at. Uh, it's built several years away, but they're looking at input. And it, what it is, it's, uh, and I'm not sure how much it'll affect the seniors, but they're looking at a, uh, like a rapid, rapid survey uh, study to look at transportation from Longmont all the way to uh, Broomfield. So in other words, instead of one stop after another, it'd be Pick, uh, a pickup location here in Longmont, and it would stop in Lafayette somewhere and go all the way to Broomfield and then return. But uh, like I said, it's it's uh, the whole idea is that to reduce the congestion and how many of our seniors would be using that kind of transportation, I'm not sure. But I just wanted to, to bring that up. Uh, and if we feel that it's necessary, we could, uh, you know, I can get some more information on one of the things I did bring up is the need of, uh, you know, how do our seniors get to it? And one, one of the things that was, uh, they talked about was that it sure be nice if we could get a senior housing uh, near 287 so people would have access to it. But again, that would be to a limited number of people. But anyway, that was, uh, that was something that was brought up. But like I said, it's, they're, they're just in the beginning stages, it sounds like. And you know anything about that, Michelle? Okay. And like I said, as I get more information on that, I will bring it up. Do you have information, Prudence? Yeah, I think, you know, there's been a lot of discussion um, at the governor's level about the transit issues with Longmont and RTD. There's also, um, I read, and this may be part of it, of building a train um, in on I-25, like most cities have, a, you know, they have their, well, here it's a highway, but most cities have freeways and the, there's train tracks built like in the middle. So people can go very far to Pueblo, to Fort Collins, into Denver, so that's part of what um, they're talking about. And it seems that Governor Polis is putting, is, has added his voice to the conversation about the lack of RTD's commitment to transit for Longmont. Um, so I think it's, you know, they've talked about adding a third lane to 119, which would be rapid bus right um, right rapid bus because right now the bus stops at every single stop um and just consolidating stops and then having a rapid and it would be a bus only That's lane. Correct. yeah so i think it's kind of exciting that that the governor has become involved however <laughs> uh i don't see it within my lifetime. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say the same thing because all the various transportation issues and ideas that have been going on for four years. I mean, right. even if anything is decided now, I mean, it right. will take what, 10 years? Right, and they also, you know, probably what they should do is public private and get it done. Because that's where it's going to get done. It's not going to be done through any county, regional, city. But if they get pri private, 
like the 470, they'll do it because it's money. Yeah. In fact, that that's really been a good a success story. I mean, we don't, probably don't appreciate it and realize that it is public private and it works. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, again, like I said, this, that, that congestion on 287 is really it's a big bad. concern. Yeah. So anyway, that was what uh, some of that. And if I hear further, get more information, I'll let you know. The only other thing I had is a comité. Uh, if we know of seniors that are interested that uh, in ESL classes, that they're going to be offering them at uh, El Comité. And of course, uh, the other thing they're really working with, especially now with a new president, is helping with citizenship for people that need help. So if you know of anyone that's, uh, uh, you know, senior and, uh, well, I mean, they're helping with everybody, but especially us with at the senior center, if we know people that are not citizens that are interested in looking into it, that we refer them to El Comité. And that was really about all that was discussed that pertained to senior. Janine, we're back to you. Uh, the Longmont Ec Economic Development Partnership um, for its board members meets um, quarterly. So we had a quarterly meeting uh, it was the first one that I had been to for quite a while. Uh, and as I said, they have been going through rather significant transition. Um, the bottom line was that many of our local businesses um, have suffered drastically through uh, the COVID-19 period and they are looking to do as much as they can do uh, to support local business. They developed a program. I don't know if any of you received uh, the little gift certificate card that you take to participating local businesses and you get $10 off and they get reimbursed by the city, but it's basically looking at programs to support local business. Um, we have lost uh, a major business with uh, Novartis leaving uh, and uh, that will be 400 jobs lost in Longmont. So that is a major concern. Uh, so all things that we can do to support our local businesses and, um, and support Longmont development um, we should be looking at very seriously. Um, because there's been such restructuring, there was a, a rather heated uh, conversation between current uh, administration and the advisory board uh, about some disorganization. And I think it's just going to take a little time uh, for, for things to settle out and um, the board has been restructured. They have advisory people within the community that are business owners and they don't feel that they've been, uh, um, that the coordination has been there. And I can certainly understand that when I look at how much they've been dealing with over the last year and all the restructuring of personnel that they've done. Um, you heard the other issue in terms of development, housing development, and that is um, a hot topic for me. Uh, I live in a community, I live within two blocks of massive uh, development that's happened over the last five years. And uh, trust me, uh, we have seen... Um, nine apartments go up, two subdivisions, and now 83 paired housing development, all within two blocks of our neighborhood, which has caused incredible in infrastructure problems and no attention has been paid to that. 
So whereas I respectfully disagree with our city council members about um, we need to build more and more and more, uh, we also need to pay attention to infrastructure. That's a personal opinion and I admit I'm construction fatigued, but if anyone has any input and would like to share that with me, I will continue uh, along the lines of trying to build, you know, within reason in our community, or we will in fact end up like other communities close to us. And um, building at all cost is, is, is not necessarily the answer. So uh, as I said, that's personal. I, I disagree <laughs> with our current council, but um, that's just the reality. So please feel free to share with me if you have any, any thoughts or issues along that line. I would never represent our board with my personal opinion. Um, but that was a big part of the discussion. So, it, uh, yeah. I, I live in Southwest Longmont. I'm also fatigued by all the buildings. Yes. Really it's, fatigued. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm not no build, but there are limits to what we can tolerate when building is done and then they decide, well, what are we going to do about traffic? and parking and uh, I it, it's 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 unfathomable what my community has gone through in the last five years. Unfathomable. Curtis. So. Um Janine, I have a question. Was there any discussion about, you know, Novartis has a huge campus? Yes. Uh, was there any discussion? I mean, because you're talking about housing, so I could see that being plowed down for housing, actually. So, um, instead no apartments. Of, apartments. We're not building houses anymore. We're all right, going right. apartments and duplexes and commute. You know, community condos and <laughs> right, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So I, I wondered if they had any discussion about who they would like to attract. What they mentioned is that they had, they had at least four companies that were interested uh, or expressing some interest. I think for that complex, they certainly, I mean, it's huge and it's massive. It's Unfortunately, it was built for a specific reason. Right. And you can't just move any company into there. Uh, uh, but they do have four potential businesses that are looking at expanding. Uh, you know, the Smuckers people are going to be right. building, uh, even though it's Weld County, uh, as is Costco Weld County, uh, those are still jobs for our community. Oh, yeah. Um, and so um, they, they're they looking, they certainly at this point, I don't think the plan is to, you know, knock it down and build subdivisions. I think they are looking to uh, recruit businesses to move into Longmont, which, you know, it's, it's all growth push, but um, it, it, there has to be a balance. Right. <laughs> there right. has to be a balance. Um, and in my opinion. So uh, that's kind of what they're looking at. I don't, they weren't specific about what companies were interested, mm -hmm. um, but it would have to be somebody that did some type of research or, right, uh, because it's much more of a research facility. I don't know exactly. if you've ever been in there or not, but much more of a research facility than anything else. Yeah, because they, they, you know, only one drug was produced there, the $3.8 million drug, uh, right. which was used for uh, rare and often disease. So I can see, <laughs> I mean, they didn't produce anything else except this one drug. Um, and, and so, you know, I never really understood why they bought that 
property at all. Um, it just well, I'm sense trying sense to think to back about maybe you can help me, Michelle, about what the company was that was there before AstraZeneca Novartis. It Am was uh, Amgen. Amgen. Amgen, right. Amgen. Uh, and they're the ones that originally built and then right. they went back to Boston. Uh, so um, I'm not sure, you know, I, I always think I'd love for them to make solar panels or you know, do a conversion to something that uh, potentially is going to um, have positive impact on our environment. But um, I guess we'll just see. We'll have to see. Yeah, I go along with the solar panels and a new recreation center with a 50 meter pool. <laughs> Art, uh, Ginny, uh, Ginny uh, one of the, I have the same concern on uh, Northeast Longmont with the, uh, with the apartments and the senior units. I mean, some of these seniors going across the street with their walkers, et cetera. Uh, I just hope that these people that are moving into those apartments are aware that safety is a real big issue. And I'm hoping that another thing that's being considered is that uh, when they have these apartment complexes, et cetera, that they have sufficient off-street parking because uh, <laughs> if not, then we've got the issue of them parking on the street as well as there. And that also provide, uh, creates a, a safety uh, concern there too. So I wanted to, Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I think Marcia and I had that discussion last uh, last time about parking and they always think that there's plenty of parking available, but that's not necessarily the case or that at least for senior housing, none of us are going to be driving anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I hope they don't get to the point where they think they can start parking in the senior center because there are <laughs> a, a few parking spots there that are available you know right hey our goal is to fill them up yeah, um, right. so uh, so two two things um with the transportation efforts one of the things we have brought up uh, a couple of different times is on the North Main Street transportation corridor is the number of older adults and people in general who cross Main Street oh, mid block. It is. It's very scary. And so I know that looking like north of 17th and looking at that traffic, pedestrian traffic pattern across Main Street is on the radar. I don't know what they can do about it, but it's on the radar. And the second thing is, I have been coming and going from Spring Creek and Fall River apartments, which are up there in the northeast corner. And um, I regular I, I, in a recent situation, I took pictures of an intersection that I felt very strongly needed a stop sign. Sent the pictures to my colleague at the city and said, as soon as this apartment complex is complete and filled. This three, it's a three way intersection with only one has a stop sign. Mm. So you don't know who, I mean, the right of way is very wonky. And so Tyler said he would go up and take a look at it. He agreed with me, thought it needed a stop sign. But I think that's another piece to the development issue. As you add more people, you have to look at those car and pedestrian traffic patterns up there and be be on top of it and ready to say this didn't work we might have thought it was going to work but it but it's not working um for sure well, certainly in that area because you know that's my hood uh michelle nothing nothing was looked at in terms of infrastructure and and roads and how are you going to deal with all these people nothing and that's always looked at after and you're right we have two large senior complexes in amongst all this new right. building and no absolutely no attention has been paid to safety not only that but safety and 
given that roads are frequently closed, they're dug up, there's gravel trucks, there's, there's all kinds of safety issues, not just for our older adults, but for the young people, the young children in, in neighborhoods. So it's, it's not just all about growth. Well, I also called about coming out of Aspen Meadows Senior Apartments right? because there was a block. It was it was a blocked view. You couldn't see and they didn't have any no parking for 20 or 30 feet or whatever they do. And um, yeah, I do think the traffic and pedestrian and car changes things and, and we need to try to stay ahead of it as much as we can. Be engaged. <laughs> One final thing I wanted to say is you brought up the part about businesses and how they're struggling or have struggled. And, you know, it's kind of interesting that, uh, and, and there's nothing we can do about it, but businesses are now open at 100%, most business, uh, restaurants anyway. But the situation is you still have the, the six foot distancing. So the situation is it really doesn't help if you don't have a larger building. If you were at capacity, you know, you can't add any more tables if you've got to keep them apart. But, I mean, like I said, it's beyond our control, but that's something that people need to be aware of also. Hopefully that'll change. Uh, if this goal of 70, what, 70% 70 of the people get vaccinated by July 4th. <laughs> the best thing we can do for everyone is to get people vaccinated. And uh, I just, uh, I don't know how that's going to go. Um, but, uh, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> well, that, that's all that I have um, about Longmont Economic Development Sustainability Meeting is on uh, Friday. We always end up being either the day before or two days after uh, this meeting. So, um, I have not even gotten my update and agenda for that meeting yet, but um, at any point, I'll let you know. Thank you, Janine. Any other questions, thoughts, or a motion to adjourn? I don't want any anybody to go away. I've had so much fun today. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>